to. You are my favorite Linux-based operating system. Hello, everyone. In today's video, I'm going to briefly discuss what Ubuntu Linux is, how it fits in with the larger Linux ecosystem, and why I recommend it for newbies. This video is a follow-up to another video called What is Linux that I suggest you check out if you haven't already. So what is Ubuntu Linux? Ubuntu is a distribution of Linux created and supported by a company called Canonical. This is somewhat unique in the Linux world, as most distributions of Linux are community rather than company supported. Despite being company supported, it's still legally available for free. They make money mostly by selling support for their Ubuntu servers. But over the years, they have also made money through a couple controversial decisions related to business and privacy, such as having a partnership with Amazon.com that many users found tacky or worse, and the choice to sell user search data, supposedly not in a way that can be traced back to you, to other companies. But as far as I can tell, they've listened to the community and all that junk has been removed. A man named Mark Shuttleworth founded Canonical in 2004, the same year as Ubuntu's first release. Mark Shuttleworth was born and grew up in South Africa and chose the name Ubuntu because, according to him, Ubuntu is an ancient African word meaning humanity towards others, a concept he embraces. Ubuntu Linux is based in another distribution called Debian. According to Ubuntu's website, Debian is the rock on which Ubuntu is built. So let's take a moment to discuss what Debian Linux is. Debian Linux is a community-supported Linux distribution that initially came out in 1993. It's the second oldest distribution of Linux that's still maintained today. Slackware Linux predates it by just a little bit. Debian Linux fully embraces the FOSS principles. FOSS stands for free and open source software, but that acronym doesn't fully explain its principles. Please watch my What is Linux video or check out the link in the description if you want to learn more about the FOSS principles. Debian makes it just hard enough to install any software that violates the FOSS principles that their stance on the importance of FOSS cannot be argued. Debian was the first distribution of Linux to introduce a truly robust packaging system. Today, Debian maintains over 59,000 packages. If you need to install a package, it's as easy as running a simple install command, and if that package has dependencies on other packages, it installs them too. Prior to Ubuntu, installing software in Linux was a very frustrating experience, as you had to manually track down individual dependencies of any software you wanted, and often you had to seek out a specific version of said dependency, not just the most recent. And finally, depending on your distribution, you had to compile it directly from the source code. Debian changed all that. Just run a simple install command and you're up and running. Debian places a high emphasis on stability and security. Back to Ubuntu. Canonical introduced Ubuntu in 2004 by taking Debian's robust packaging system and using its resources added even more packages, polished the user interface, did user experience research, and implemented user experience improvements based on that research. Today Ubuntu has a sleek, modern look and simple user experience that reminds me a bit of what seems to make Apple's macOS and iOS so successful. Ubuntu is less concerned with embracing FOSS principles than they are about having a fully usable system. Some proprietary drivers are available out of the box in Ubuntu, and the addition of repositories that contain other proprietary software is just one click of a checkbox away. Ubuntu is the first distribution of Linux I use that just worked. I try to keep um, use it's Ubuntu these days. Um, it seems the friendliest. I used Linux on and off for a few years leading up to the introduction of Ubuntu, but it was largely as a tinkerer. Unless I was using Linux for a web server at work, my use of Linux was entirely for the purposes of education rather than productivity. Starting with Ubuntu, this changed. Suddenly, I could use Linux as my daily driver and only boot into Microsoft Windows once every few weeks. Over time, Canonical has improved Ubuntu even more. Ubuntu releases every six months in April and October. Most of these are what they call interim releases, but in April of even-numbered years, they release what they call long-term support, or LTS, versions. If you're using Ubuntu as your primary OS, I suggest sticking with these LTS versions. But checking out interim releases virtually can be kind of fun and possibly prepare you for what might be coming in the next LTS release. Here's a chart showing recent, current, and upcoming distributions and what their support schedules look like. Since I'm recording this video in June of 2020, you can see the 20.04, 20 for the year 2020, and 04 for the month of April, LTS release just came out about two months ago. So if you install it now, you'll have a supported OS for years to come as maintenance updates will happen through most of 2025 and extended security maintenance updates will last until 2030. I myself will almost certainly stick with it until the 22.04 release comes out. Ubuntu started out using the GNOME 2 desktop environment. Yes, we pronounce the G in GNOME. When the GNOME project announced they would be transitioning to GNOME 3, many distributions decided they didn't want to fully embrace that change, and Ubuntu was among them. It wasn't GNOME 3 they opposed specifically, but rather the default GNOME shell for GNOME 3. So Canonical decided to make the switch to GNOME 3, but introduced their own shell that they called Unity. Unity was the official desktop shell for Ubuntu from versions 11.04 through 17.04. For Ubuntu 17.10, they made the decision that maintaining their own shell was not a productive use of their time and adopted the official GNOME shell for their operating system, but tweaked it to make it largely match the look and feel their Unity desktop had. They continue to use the tweaked GNOME shell today. Here's a side-by-side -side visual comparison of Unity and their tweaked GNOME shell. Since Ubuntu used Unity for so long, and because Ubuntu 16.04, which used Unity, is still in long-term support, 
It's likely you'll run across perfectly valid instructions whose screenshots include the Unity desktop rather than a modern one if you are Googling for help. I mentioned that Debian was the first distribution to include a truly robust packaging system, but they were hardly the last. Red Hat introduced their own similar system, but it's wholly incompatible with Debian's. Then other distributions followed suit. So today we have dozens of package managers that are all incompatible with each other. All these package managers have similar limitations. First, since not all software relies on the same version of dependencies, and sometimes installing more than one version of the same dependency causes problems, these package managers have to choose between including software that is several versions away from current, so they can ensure that all their packages work well together, or including newer software and choosing not to worry much about system instabilities. Debian and Ubuntu historically have opted for the former. Therefore, often software from Ubuntu slash Debian repositories lacked newer features and taking steps to install the newer versions of the software might introduce system instabilities. In addition, all these packaging systems run software using the same model of permitting or denying access to system resources that was originally introduced to Unix in the 1960s. Given all these drawbacks and the incompatibilities between the various package systems, attempts to introduce new systems that address all these problems and that all distributions can get on board with is a bit of a holy grail in the Linux community. Canonical jumped on board and introduced their own solution called Snaps. As of Ubuntu 15.04, Canonical has been nudging people towards Snaps. This introduced a small headache though. When you go to install new software, you're often presented with both the Snap version and the old school Debian package version. So what's the difference? Snaps run most applications sandboxed, so the applications don't have access to system resources they shouldn't need, and all dependencies of that software are included within said sandbox. This approach is hard drive space inefficient, but luckily it solves the dependency issue stated before. Theoretically, running the application sandbox slows them down, but I haven't noticed any problems. Snaps also allow for multiple versions of the same software to exist simultaneously, so you can use a beta version of the software for a test project and then switch back to the stable release for a production project really easily. As of Ubuntu 20.04, Canonical is pushing Snaps even harder, to the point where just around the corner installing the old school Debian Ubuntu packages might not be possible without utilizing the command line or installing additional software. The candidate version of the official Ubuntu Software Manager has been renamed from Ubuntu Software Store to Snap Store. Its icon has been replaced, and all non-Snap applications have been removed from the list. We'll see if Ubuntu rolls back these choices before the candidate version becomes stable. Snaps are not the only proposed grand unified packaging solution, but it's the most convenient out-of-the-box solution present in Ubuntu. If you run into problems with Snap software and the Debian packages are absent, out of date, or have their own problems, keep in mind that other solutions exist, but in Ubuntu you'll have to take extra steps to get them working. I'll put a link in the description that discusses alternatives. So when I say I recommend Ubuntu for newbies, I'm partly recommending the larger Ubuntu ecosystem, as Ubuntu itself is the root of many other distributions. I still recommend starting out with Ubuntu proper though. Most of the time I see people recommending a distribution of Linux to newbies that isn't Ubuntu, that distribution is based on Ubuntu. Let's quickly look at this Linux distribution timeline chart, link available in the description, to get a sense of where Ubuntu fits in with a larger Linux ecosystem. Here, starting from 1993, you see Debian Linux at the root of Ubuntu, as well as plenty of other distributions. Follow this orange line here, and you find Ubuntu, but look at all the distributions that branch off of it. It's not practical to discuss all these distributions, so let's just briefly discuss a few. Firstly, seven official alternate flavors of Ubuntu exist, with links available directly from Ubuntu's website. These alternate flavors are stock Ubuntu, but with different desktop managers or different pre-configured software and settings. So if you don't love Ubuntu, but only because you don't love its user interface, one of these distributions may well be for you. These flavors include Kubuntu, which is Ubuntu with a KDE desktop environment. KDE is really GNOME's main competitor. This was also the distro they decided to base Hannah Montana Linux on, by the way. Yes, there was a Hannah Montana Linux, y'all. Also, there's Ubuntu Mate. Mate is a fork of the GNOME 2 desktop, which you may recall is what older distributions of Ubuntu use. So users who love that experience can still use something very much like it, even though GNOME 2 has been discontinued. There's also Ubuntu Budgie. Budgie was created for a very popular distribution of Linux called Solus, which is a completely independent distribution not based on an existing one. Ubuntu Budgie brings that look and feel to the Ubuntu ecosystem. Ubuntu Kylin caters to the needs of Chinese language users, while Lubuntu and Zubuntu offer super lightweight desktop environments, though they might look a little outdated or amateurish to some people. Finally, there's Ubuntu Studio, which is geared towards media creators. Let's also take a look at which of the distributions in DistroWatch's top 20, as of the time I record this, it may be different for you in the future, are Ubuntu or based in Ubuntu. Here they are, that's seven total. And as I said, Ubuntu is rooted in Debian. So if I include the ones rooted in Debian, an additional five appear in this list for a total of 12. Basically, learning Ubuntu will go a long way to making the transition to dozens of other distributions much easier, including about a dozen really popular ones. So why do I recommend Ubuntu for newbies? Since it's backed by a company, but as I said, still free, they have the resources to keep it looking professional and modern and to keep it stable, both things that new users appreciate. Out of the box, it limits customization options, which is helpful to keep new users from becoming overwhelmed. 
Once they're ready, they can follow well-written instructions to open up hundreds of customization options or try a different distribution altogether. Usually, a generic internet search for how to solve a Linux problem will bring up an Ubuntu-based solution. They strike an excellent balance which offers both newbies and power users an excellent experience, though of course, as with anything else, you'll find haters out there for sure. I'll say I've spoken with a handful of people who hated Ubuntu at first, but then got comfortable with it and grew to love it. Frankly, I was this way myself when I returned to Ubuntu after stepping away from it for a few years, only to find on my return a drastically different user experience in front of me. But I came around and now I love it again. I hope if you try Ubuntu and don't like the experience at first, you'll give it a few days before you reject it. Hopefully you'll love it right away. Ubuntu, well theoretically all Linux distributions, are not something you have to go all in on all at once. You can run it virtually from within Microsoft Windows or Apple Mac. I'll follow this video up with one teaching how to install Ubuntu 20.04 in VirtualBox with Microsoft Windows as the host OS, so as to guide new users how to get started with Ubuntu Linux. Thanks for watching.